Hi guys and welcome back to Rachel's Enchanting Cakes. Now today I'm going to show you how to do Wonder Woman as a minion. Everything step by step, everything you need to know. If you like what you see please do share the tutorial, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned because there'll be more coming. Happy baking guys and let's get cracking. For this stand-up minion cake, I'm actually using this set by Cake Frame Limited. Now this can be purchased in the UK at Lakeland, but if you're abroad, don't fear. Um, you can get it from cakeframe.com and many other great cake decorating supply stores. All of this equipment is completely food grade and can be reused. This is going to be our internal support for the actual cake. So what do you get in this box? You get what's called a 10 inch round baseboard so this will be acting a bit like what your cake drum would act like a six inch round platform four foundation pieces these come with lock nuts and two adapters so what do we need to do first you want to get your baseboard and we want to place on the foundations so i find if you place them both in at the same time and just balance it it's much easier to screw on the lock nuts. Now using your adapter, simply place these into each of your foundation pieces. Then you want to get your other two foundation pieces and just gently push them onto the top like so. Finally, your six inch round platform. As you can see so far, it's really, really, really easy to put together and again screw on with your lock nuts and it really is as simple as that now let's get to constructing our minion so the first thing you want to do is simply make up some rice crispy treats now this is just a combination of melted marshmallows and then you add your rice krispies what i tend to do is just melt the marshmallows in a pan i don't weigh them I pour the Rice Krispies into my six inch half ball tin, which you will also need. Just to get a rough idea how many I'm going to need, then I add, add that to my melted marshmallows and you'll end up with roughly just the right amount. If you add some extra Rice Krispies, just so you've got extra to be on the safe side. So this is still really hot. All I'm going to do, first of all, I have placed some butter just inside this half ball tin, is add these really hot Rice Krispie treats. So you're looking for something like this. Now what I'm going to do with the frame, remember it's in two halves, we're going to just take off the top half like so, because what we're wanting to do is create a little belly for our minion. I'm going to line this up with my tin and simply push down. Turn it upside down and now we're going to take out the Rice Krispie Treats. And just make sure these legs are coming all the way through first of all. So that's the rough idea of what we're wanting. Now I'm going to get my tin back it back inside and to one side I've just got a small amount of melted chocolate this is just for extra support so where the actual Rice Krispie treats are going just add some of this lovely melted chocolate now I'm just going to repeat the process that I did earlier so I'm going to take my platform place it into my holes that I already have Turn it upside down and that is what you are looking for. Now if you notice, I've got a few Rice Krispie Treats in these parts of the foundation pieces. All I'm going to use is, you do is use a cocktail stick to take out these just so that this will slot back on to the rest of the frame. But you want to leave this to set this way up first. You want all that chocolate to go lovely and hard. You want the Rice Krispies to set and also cool down. So if you just cover this with some cling film, pop it into the fridge for about 20 minutes and then we'll get on to the next step. 
The next step is to cover this with some buttercream, also known as crumb coating. Now I have an absolutely delicious buttercream recipe, which I will also leave a link for in the description below this video. So simply get some of your buttercream and start covering your Rice Krispie Treats. And that's what you're looking for. Basically, all this has done is filled in any gaps on those Rice Krispies. So now what I like to do is take some more cling film. This buttercream will just go lovely and hard and you'll be able to remove the cling film no problem. And we're just getting rid of any gaps. We're making it as smooth as possible, just so we've got a lovely canvas to add our fondant to. All I've done here is rolled out a small amount of navy blue fondant, 300 gram to be precise. And um, if you've not seen me use these before, they've been rolled out in between spaces. And these are exactly five millimeters thick, just so we get a nice even covering. All you need to do is simply lift up your fondant and gently place it over just like so. And now you want to negotiate all of the pleats and make sure that these legs are popping through. Using a knife, cut off any excess fondant. Now, using your smoothers, simply smooth it out until you are happy with the results. What we're going to actually do now is start assembling the cake. So this is the baseboard with the two foundation pieces. I've just taken the tummy, as you can see, out of the fridge and I'm now going to apply this to the foundation pieces on my baseboard. If I just hold this up to the camera so you can see how nice and sturdy it is. And that's going to be our minion's little tummy just going underneath. So now I want to stack and apply all of my cake and the fillings. So for this particular cake, what I have baked are two 16-inch round Victoria sponges and one half ball cake. I have a lovely Victoria sponge recipe also available on YouTube and the amount of batter that I make in that particular tutorial is just enough to fill two six inch round cake pans and also a six inch half ball tin so it will be perfect for this cake. So all I'm going to do first is add a small amount of buttercream. So I'd recommend now placing this in the fridge for about 30 to 40 minutes and then we're going to add the final piece. So I've just taken this out of the fridge and I'm just going to add my final layer. And I'm going to place this in the fridge again just until all this buttercream has firmed up nicely and then we're going to crumb coat the entire cake and cover it with fondant. All I'm going to do now is cover the remainder of this cake with buttercream. It's actually called crumb coating if you've never done it before. And all it will do is just help the fondant stick to the actual cake. But what I have done, I have left this in the fridge for a while, so all this is set, so there's not going to be any bulging. And once it has been covered in fondant, that will help hold everything in. So all you need to do, really simple, but take your time with it. Get some buttercream and literally just go all the way around your cake. And that is what you are aiming to achieve. Now I'm just going to neaten this up, then I'm going to place it in the fridge again for about another 30 minutes, just so that this can go quite firm, but not too firm. And then we will be adding the fondant, which I'll show you how to do next. The next step is to actually cover our minion cake. So I have rolled 
five kilogram of fondant again in between my spaces you just want to simply lift this up place it over the minion and then work fairly fast to negotiate the pleats Now before I take off this excess just off the bottom, I'm going to use my smoothers just to smooth it down slightly so it's easier to cut off. And that's the sort of thing that we're looking for now. You want to get your smoother and just take your time making your minion as smooth as possible. going to do now is I'm just going to keep on smoothing this out and then the next step will be to add those perfect finishing touches. Now this is without a doubt my favourite part in cake decorating when everything just slowly starts to piece together. So we're going to start turning our minion into Wonder Woman and um, firstly he's going to need a golden belt. Now if I just show you the picture I drew before I actually started this cake, this is a rough idea of what we are aiming for. Now I've also got some mathematics down at the bottom here. So basically, these lovely pieces of baking parchment are what I'm using as a guide. If I just show you, we're going to do it in half, so the front and then the back. I just place that on there, you can see how it covers half of the cake. Now that is because this is exactly 24 centimetres long. So if you're doing this cake, when you start drawing on your baking parchment, it needs to be 24 centimetres. That's why I have another piece, again, exactly 24 centimetres that will cover the back. That's pi, it's all mathematical, but this should help. There might be a little gap in between, but not much. So I'm going to use these as my guides. What we're going to do first is do this using modeling paste. And it's going to have to set in order for us to use some golden edible paint and paint the modeling paste gold, basically, on the bottom. The top part will remain red. However, you'll also notice these other little drawings on the baking parchment, if I just hold them up. These parts here are also going to be golden. So what I'm going to do for that, again, using modeling paste, which I'm going to make in a moment, I will cut these shapes out, stick them on, let them set, that's very important, and then paint it gold. So I'm just going to put the red to one side. Now, if you've never made modelling paste before, it's really simple. You just take, this is some of the leftover fondant from actually covering the cake. I don't have too much. And all you want to do is add a small amount of Tylo powder. You knead it in to the fondant and then you can use it straight away. If you want a more organic alternative, you can use gum trag but you will need to leave that overnight. So let's get started. I've just added a very small amount of Tylo powder to my yellow fondant. I've also cut off the strips that are going to be the belt and now using just a very small amount, just using your finger of Trex vegetable fat or any vegetable fat, place it on the baking parchment, just like so. This is going to help just stick it to the fondant, or should I say gum paste, modelling paste, whatever you want to call it, just so that we can cut around the outsides. Now I'm using a very large scalpel that's only ever been used with sugar crack. You can use a normal knife, but you might not get a very sharp finish. And you literally just want to gently cut around that baking paper using it as a guide. A 
and that is what you are looking for so if i just bring our minion here i want to put the front piece on first now this is sweating slightly because i have been storing it in the fridge as it's very 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 hot here in the uk at the moment so it won't need any glue it will stick naturally now it's a bit difficult for me to see this whether or not it's exactly central if i just give him a little that's bang on so that's his little belt you'll notice i've left the baking paper on just whilst i apply it to the actual cake it makes it an awful lot more simple now we may need to trim some of this part off but i'm just going to swizzle it around and do the same for the back And all you want to do now is just try and neaten up these sides, even though they're not a focal point on the cake, try and get it as neat as possible. All I've done here is repeated exactly what I did with the belt, but with my other two templates. Um, I am actually going to stick these on with some edible glue now because my cake, now it's cooled down slightly, it's not sweating half as much. So again, I've left the baking parchment on. Turning it over and I'm going to now add edible glue. Just so I make sure I stick this in the right place, I'm just going to swivel around my minion. And you just align it up with the belt that is already on there. I'm going to be using this template again, so we don't want to be throwing this one away because we need to add these on in gold remember so we're just going to gently peel that off and that is the front of our wonder woman minion i'm now just going to repeat the same step but with this strip for the back so like before with everything else i have just used my baking parchment and cut out the final two pieces now these ones are really, really thin pieces of modeling paste. If I just hold them up to the camera, but you can see how they're holding their shape. So I'm now going to stick these on, but we then need to leave the cake to set before we can start painting these gold. It just won't go on very well if the modeling paste hasn't set. So whilst these are setting, we can start with the mouth, the eyes, the sword and everything else that's going to be going with, with it. So if I just show you, again I've left it on the baking parchment, just so it's easier to pick up and stick on. A small amount of edible glue on the back. And then just place them onto your cake. Now I'm just going to take away those strips of baking parchment, neaten it up slightly, and then we'll get to doing the eyes, the mouth, the hair, everything else, just while all of this sets. To make the eyes, all I have done is use extremely simple shapes. So I'm sure you'll have a circle cutter. I've used a circle cutter for both of the eyes. And as you can see, if I show you the pupils inside, just smaller circle cutters. The grey part around the outside that we will be painting silver because it's part of the goggles, I have just simply rolled out a sausage shape and wrapped it around. And then for the mouth, this is a bit more delicate. Again, I've started by using a circle cutter. Then I have cut it in half, bended it slightly. And as for the teeth that I have added, again, they were just small, little, round, circles that I have, little balls that I've rolled out, I've placed them on there, all in a line and just manipulated them slightly. Same with the tongue and as you can see I've just put a small indentation in there. Really good cakes can be made extremely simple, you just need to learn how to use the simple shapes. So I don't know if I'm going to need any glue, I might do because it's not sweating too much. Again, I've had to keep this cake in the fridge because here in the UK we're in the middle of a heat wave. Keep on having to put on the air conditioner, switch it off because it's too noisy when I'm recording. So all I'm going to do now is stick these to the cake and then we're going to start on some sugar work that needs to be left to set so that it can go rock hard.
So for the sword, again, using a hand-drawn template, this is exactly from the point to the tip, 22 centimetres long. It may vary for your cake. All I did was put a ruler against mine and decided roughly how high I wanted it to be. And mine is three and a half centimetres wide that's just on this part so further up where the arms are for are actually further out it's just a little bit longer again i have put the baking parchment using some vegetable fat over the top of the modeling paste and i'm simply going to cut around it it has been rolled in between five millimeter spaces this is very important you need this to be quite thick and it's going to be left to set and it will actually hold its shape so all you need to do first of all is cut around carefully just like we have with the previous modelling paste. Now do not throw this part away because these top bits we are going to be covering with some golden yellow the same color as the minion so you're going to need this part of the template just here to be able to cut out the golden yellow now ideally this wants to be left overnight now if it's really hot or humid where you are i would recommend placing it in an oven and just putting on the oven light it will help speed up the setting process but this will go lovely and hard. So the next step is to start on the crown. So for the crown, all I've done is repeat the same process. Um, my crown from top to bottom is six centimeters high at the highest point, and it's 21 centimeters long. So again, just taking your scalpel or sanding knife, you want to gently cut around the baking paper, need to wrap it around a tin and because I have rolled it exactly five millimeters thick it will stand happily just by itself like so. So you want to place this again if it's a hot and humid day like it is over here I'm just going to pop this into the oven so it sets an awful lot faster. I am going to leave that baking parchment on just for a short while as it will help keep it stable. You can see I've already done one of the minion's legs just here. So I'm just going to show you how I've done that. Now, because I don't just want to wrap uh, gum paste directly around the frame, I want to just, it's a minion. It's got little chubby legs. I'm just getting some fondant and I'm just manipulating it around the cake frame. Next step is to roll out a strip of gum paste. Just cover the fondant with some edible glue. And it really is as easy as that. Now just take your time neatening this up with your fingers. And then all you need to do for the little red booter is repeat that process. So do a small strip of red just to go around the back. And then for the front, I have just rolled out a little bowl shape squished it into an oval and gently placed it on there. Now I've already started painting this so at the bottom I'm just using a very light gold and um, it's the metallic light gold by Rainbow Dust Food Paint 100% edible. So all I've done, this is all you need to do, is place a little bit in one of your painting palettes like so and you literally, it's just this top one that I need to paint now. Just paint over the modeling paste. Cover all of the parts and it's as simple as that. It's really starting to come together now, bless him. All I've done to the goggles is painted on some dark silver metallic rainbow dust edible paint, but you will see me use that later on with the sword. All he's going to need once that sword is set is his crown, which we're also waiting to set, his hair and his arms. So he's almost finished. I just want to cover up this part of the frame that acts as our baseboard. 
So all I have done is rolled out some golden yellow fondant and I'm actually going to do it in sections. So using my knife, I'm going to cut it into quarters. Because we're going to have a foot around this area, remember it's only fondant so it's easily manipulated once it's on there. I have added some water to this to help it stick. Simply pick it up and manipulate it. Now I'm wanting this to have ruffles in there because I think it's quite effective. I don't want a perfectly flawless, smooth finish. And there we have it. So I'm going to neaten this up now until I am happy and then we're just going to add those final perfect finishing touches. We're almost finished. I just want to show you how the crown has turned out and explain what I have actually done. Can you see how beautiful and shiny that looks? All I've done first of all, I've let it set as you can see. I've painted it with the Rainbow Dust Light Gold Edible Food Paint, but then I have sprayed it. These have become my new favourite. They're completely edible. They are by Claire Bowman, and it's the Gold Pump Push Edible Glitter Dust, just to give it that extra va va -voom. Now, before we add this to the top, I am going to add some hair first. It's not real hair. He's wearing a wig, but he still needs the black hair. So there's one more thing we need to do to our crown before we do the hair and then we can apply it. And that is just to simply add a W for Wonder Woman in red. Now I've just used one of my font cutters for this. You can use any font cutter that you want. A little bit of edible glue. And then just apply it to the front. Of the crown. Try and get it central. Perfect. And now we're going to add the hair. So how do you add the hair? This is this a really really simple process. As you can see I've already made a start on this side. So I'm just going to show you how to add a piece and you just keep doing the same until it's completely covered. So that's the side we want towards the camera. I'm using black fondant, not modelling paste, because this will stay nice and soft, really pliable, and we can get these lovely pleats in like we've got on this side. All you want to do is just roll out a thin piece and then just use your Stanley knife, and I've just got a random shape, as you can see. Smooth, it's swirling. A small amount of edible glue directly onto the cake. Now you'll notice I've got a line going down the back, that's the back of the cake. That's because it has got a slight parting. It just helps you place the hair on an awful lot better because once we've done the hair, we will then be adding the crown and finally, if we want to add a few more bits, we can always make it look that little bit better. Now, the top of this, I don't know if you can see that, you want straight, that's for the parting and then just place it onto your cake. Now, I'm not wanting it to touch the red part of the body. I want to, some of the yellow from the actual minion still poking through. If you want it to go all the way down or longer, that's fine. And once you've done that, all you do, using a Dresden tool, is manipulate your fondant and turn it into hair. And it really is as simple as that. Now I'm going to go and finish the rest of this cake just by repeating that process and slightly overlapping them. And then we will add the crown. Almost finished. I'm just gonna give it a little twirl for you so you can see what we've done so far. So I've completely 
Continue to add those panels of hair and then I've just rolled out a few sausage shapes for the front just to give it a little bit more definition. You'll notice it's quite shiny, it's because it's wet. I've brushed off the icing sugar just with a little bit of water, but that will now act like glue for this little beauty, which wants to go. Let me just check we get it in the right place. I'm thinking about that. I want some of the hair to be showing through. So I don't want to push it down too much. <laughs> Perfect, that's exactly what I had in my head. So the next step will be to finish off that sword, um, we should be applying that, and then some arms, and our Wonder Woman minion will be complete. Now this sword has been setting for some time now, and you'll know when it's ready, because you can pick it up, and it'll sound like that. If I just hold this towards the camcord, you'll be able to see, again, it's quite shaky. Um, it's shimmering. What I have done, first of all I have painted it with the metallic dark silver edible paint but then again I told you these are my favourites, they also do um, the edible glitter in a pump that is silver not just gold so for the crown we have gold but I have added just a little bit, I like sparkly stuff so I've added some silver to the actual sword here. Yeah. Now remember I told you to save your templates? Well this is still on its baking parchment and that is going to be for the top just there. So that's our first job to stick this on. So using just a small amount of edible glue and place on the rest of the sword. Now remember we measured this sword perfectly. I'm just going to move this out of the way and just turn my lovely minion. So we're going to use the cake as a support for the sword as well. Even though it's set, it's not just going to be dangling out of the board. So you want to go to the centre. Now remember you've covered some of this with edible paint. So try not to put, when you're going over it, just try not to like make a mess and smear everywhere because it will Okay, so on the tummy, because that's going to be the main part that's holding the sword. And also on these parts. Now, if I remember correctly, I've done it so the handles just go over there. So I will pop a little bit on here, but not too much. And plenty on the red. And then everything else will actually be going into the base, but that's already quite sticky. It is still fragile. Get it central to where you want it. So about there. Push down into the drum. And it actually looks, the way I've designed it, it needs to be stuck around that area. So I'm just going to take it off. You'll notice I've got a mark now, so I know where to put everything. Where the sword is actually going to be touching is on these parts here. So this is where we need a lot of edible glue and then basically just don't touch it. Don't move it, just let it set. I'm just going to put some more down there and now just gently pick up the sword, place it into the hole, align it with where we found it touched the cake the most. You'll be amazed what edible, can do, edible glue does once it is actually set. Make sure it's completely vertical. If we have any, any humidity, you want it, if I, I'm going to turn it to the side just so you can see how vertical it is. That's perfect. It's touching the cake and it's down in the fondant, but it does need to be left to set. We are going to be adding some arms next and then our Wonder Woman minion is officially finished. We're at the final part, the arms. Now, if you're wondering why, why I've placed these cocktail sticks in, the arms are quite heavy. Once all that fondant has set, once the edible glue has set, they won't go anywhere. But just whilst they are setting to stop them sliding off the cake, we just need that extra little bit of support. 
So what have I done? All I did was roll out two sausage shapes exactly the same size. Then you want to get your Dresden tool and make three indentations on one side. Or should I say two indentations so it just looks like it's got a little thumb and a couple of fingers. Now it's a hand so just squeeze as well because we want that area to be slightly smaller. At the other end you just want to push down because this is where the arm is going to be touching the actual fondant. So it wants to be smaller, small round piece just so that it can wrap around the body like so. Now this can be quite fiddly, I'm doing it at an angle just so that you can see what I'm doing and remember this sword is still sensitive so you do have to be careful. I'm going to place some edible glue just on the back of my arm. Try and get this at an angle so you can see what I'm doing but I can also obviously see what I'm doing as well. So then roughly get the right angle. Now you want part of the arm to actually touch the sword. So I'm thinking there. I'm supporting it with one of my fingers if you've noticed. Bring the arm slightly up and insert your first cocktail stitch just so it can't be sliding anywhere. And then try and align it with the sword. When I say align, I mean align with the other arm just so it looks like he's grasping it perfectly. Make sure your sword hasn't moved too much during that process and then you want these fingers to also be stuck to the sword and it will actually end up, once it's set, adding extra support. It really is as simple as that, guys. Give it a go, your Wonder Woman Minion Cake.